political topics of the day. Three questions, 30 seconds on the clock. Playing today, CNN contributor Maria Cardona, Jason Johnson. He's a professor at Hiram College um, and the chief political correspondent for Politic 365. And Republican strategist Ron Bonjean. Bonjean. I'm sorry, Ron. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> okay, first question. A supposedly scandalous video uh, through the late Andrew Breitbart shows Barack Obama as a Harvard student embracing a professor considered to be a socialist. David Frum at the Daily Bees asked the question, is this a big story? We decided to ask that too. So let's start with you, Ron. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I got to tell you, I, I'm not sure it is a big story because we already know that President Obama is a very left-wing leader. Uh, you know, he, last <laughs> night he was calling, yesterday he was calling senators, uh, Democratic senators, trying to defeat the Keystone Pipeline that would have created thousands of jobs. That's why the House Republicans, uh, House majority, went to Republicans in 2010 because he keeps going left. Impeachment right now. Oh my God, I don't think I can, I can take this. I can't do this anymore, Carol. Oh my God. This is so ridiculous. A Harvard Law student introducing a Harvard Law professor. I don't think the American people will be able to handle that, Carol. Seriously. <laughs> Jason. You know, the most scandalous thing about this video was Obama still kind of rocking an afro in 1990. I mean, that, that was the weirdest thing I saw in the video. It was, there was nothing strange about this whatsoever. He's doing something political. He's chatting with a bunch of people. To be honest, the sad part about this, not to speak ill of the dead, but this is the legacy of Andrew Breitbart, the idea of promoting these scandalous videos that are going to change the landscape of American politics, and it's really not that big of a deal. I wasn't shocked, except by the haircut. <laughs> okay. Let let me ask this question straight up. What will it take for Newt Gingrich to drop out of the race? Maria. <laughs> well, it's probably going to take uh, Godfather Adelson to cut him off because it's really the only reason now that Newt Gingrich can go on is because he's got maybe a little bit of money. But even, even if that happens, Carol, I don't know that there really is anything that anybody can do because it's Newt. Newt's got, not going to listen to anybody except himself, and he wants to go on, apparently, until the convention. He wants to be a spoiler, but you know what? That's the democratic process. Ron. Yeah, he's going to keep going, I think, uh, throughout this process, you know. I think at the end, though, he's going to get guaranteed a place, uh, a prime spot on Dancing with the Stars after those photos of he and Callista uh, dancing in the hotel ballroom. Or if the federal government made a chairman of the board position instead of, uh, you know, because he's probably not going to be president of the United States. That would probably be the only way they would be able to get him out of the race. Jason. Look, I've said all along, Newt Gingrich is angry. He wants revenge. He's like Liam Neeson, old man angry. He wants revenge on Romney. He's not getting out of this race. He's run all the time with little or no money, so money isn't even really going to be the issue. This campaign is going to be pulled from his cold, dead hands sometime in August <laughs> when the convention happens, and that's the only way you're going to get Newt Gingrich to stop. And even then, he may make a lot of noise at the Republican convention. Okay, third question is your buzzer beater, 20 seconds each. Mitt Romney was asked about his late night snack of choice. Here's what he said. Well, you know, I like uh, Honey Nut Cheerios, and I, like, and I like Honey Nut Checks, and uh, uh, let's see, I like Crispix. I mean, I'm, I like, of course, I love anything with sugar in it. I like the most, you know, sugar pops and honey smacks and all that, but I, I don't eat as much of that as the Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey smacks? <laughs> <laughs> is that still for sale? I don't know. Well, anyway, um, we want to know what you guys think uh, would be the late night snack of choice for the other candidates. Jason. Look, I would say, you know, Ron Paul probably has like a flagon of meat and mutton. You know, he's such a constitutionalist. He'd want to eat what the founding fathers eat. Uh, Newt Gingrich, the man probably eats charcoal for dinner. I mean, he spits fire every single time he talks. I don't know what Rick Santorum has for his late night snack. I know he probably picks it for his wife because he doesn't believe women have the right to choose. Oh. So, you know, for most of these <laughs> candidates, I think their late night snacks probably reflect their politics. Ow, Ron. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Newt Gingrich, although he did give up desserts for land, I think he pours Guinness all over his bowl of Cheerios. Uh, in terms of uh, Santorum, I think Rick Santorum probably eats a bowl of Cheetos. He's that kind of guy who would get all the orange stuff all over his fingers. And Ron Paul, Ron Paul get, would probably eat a big bowl of ice cream because he deserves it. He's been in this race. He hasn't really picked up many delegates or won any states. <laughs> Time's up. Maria. I think Rick Santorum's going to try to say that he eats grits, maybe some etouffee, maybe some sweet tea. He's got to continue to appeal to the southern states, which are coming up. I think Ron Paul probably will have a couple of bowls, maybe some special brownies, perhaps. 
Um, and then, I, and then, <laughs> and then Gingrich, I'm going to say he's going to stick to Fig Newtons. Okay. Well, thanks for playing today. It was quite enjoyable. Maria, Ron, Jason, hope to thanks, have you Carol. back soon. Thanks so Just much. Just a couple of hours ago, we learned that the nation's